the dream self reinforces the dream's current state of assumptions, current state of consciousness, current state of subtlety. Any construct you can observe, you can relinquish, you can reject even. Not out of rejection, but you can just let it be. You don't have to reject it or accept it, but it's just a knowingness. I'm not that. And then every time you say, I'm not what I perceive, it is like stepping backwards through another curtain. Another curtain opens, another curtain opens. And it becomes more and more impossible to describe your experience and what you are. You just know that you are, and it begins to be experienced directly as being all pervasive. It's not being here or there, this or that, location-bound, space-time. Even these constructs can be deconstructed as mere assumptions and sensations. We've never experienced space. We've never experienced time. We think we have, and we're convinced that we have, but upon the direct sort of truthful awareness, free of assumptions, pure, empty, it's the indescribable purity that remains. It's the indescribable you. And the more you do this, the more your conviction changes from independent objects exist to I'm the nature of all appearances, and it is more and more as a dream. Because it, the nature of things is perception itself, just like in a dream. Again, doesn't mean that we go do stupid s stuff. There is still conventional knowledge on the relative level. That's why these two need to coexist. Some people go too far with this and they add all kinds of psychedelics on sometimes even a daily basis and they're just kind of wrecked. You know, it takes time to get back to a balanced state, but all the masters that have been revered, revered over the years, they've been able to live a truly balanced life. They've been able to include everything and yet transcend. Inclusion is transcendence. If you reject something, now you can reject things in perception just for the sake of practice but not as a life philosophy, not as an embodiment. So, because if I push this away, which is different than just recognizing it's not what I am and allowing that to transcend the perception, but if I push it away, then I have motive. And that's bias. It creates imbalance. It creates bias. And that bias can turn spiritual, can turn transcendent, but then there is still this uh, um, dichotomy. There's still the separation somewhere in the perception. So true transcendence is inclusion. Whenever you fully include something, not resist it, but include it, you become the container of all of it. Hence, you transcend any of the components within it. The container transcends any of the components within the container. To be like the container, you need to neither accept nor reject. Just allow it to be exactly as it is and purify your individuated chitta, or the spark of consciousness that is your experience of self right now, purify it, make it transparent to the essential knowing nature, which is formless, all permeating, yet indisputable, and can be recognized on a moment to 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 moment basis. I can either indulge in description of what I experience and therefore project independent reality to phenomena, or I can let it be exactly as it is, indivisible from the whole painting of life as it is. And in that restful moment where I'm neither accepting nor rejecting, neither interacting nor negating, I simply allow it to be exactly as it is. This, the wholeness, the indivisibleness of the whole painting becomes apparent to itself in the form of you somehow. The formlessness realizes itself in contrast to, through the means of the form, the expression that it has given life to as you. That mystery, whatever intelligence has sourced that, it can never be put in a book. It can only be lived. It can only be, you can only be in awe of it. You can only be reveling in it. You can only be contemplating in it. Pure contemplation means to transcend knowledge at its deepest, purest level. It transcends this or that. It's just instant recognition. It's just spontaneous inner primordial knowing of that original purity, which can never be stained, which can never be lost, inside of which everything appears as knowledge, as perception. And by saying, not this, not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, which is not, again, the same as an emotional rejection. It's not the same as, oh, I don't like this pain, so I'm not this. Which you can do sometimes, if you're painful, you can practice with it, as long as you know, overarchingly know, 
that you're not really rejecting anything. You're not really making anything wrong. You're just practicing in that moment. Oh, this hurts. Why does it hurt? Oh, I'm assuming that somehow I'm identified with it. I'm t attached to it. I'm a subject to this object. And then you go within that container of holistic appreciation of everything as it is, you go, I'm not this. Ah, I'm not this. You go more and more direct to the perception of somehow I know that I am, I exist. I can't put labels to that. I can't put it in a form, but whatever form I can detect, I can reject as not the essential nature of myself. It might be an extension of it. It might be an expression of it. It might be a manifestation of it, but it does not grasp or capture the essential knowing nature, which enables the perception you're having right now. So you go deeper and deeper and subtler and subtler. This is direct path meditation. So empty yourself more and more of assumptions, become more present to direct being and allow your filters of perception, the lens of perception, that is your sense of me as the mind to become more empty, more humbled in a sense, more devotional also, because devotion means I know that I don't know very much at all, right? Humility and devotion are very closely related. To be devotional gives you the ability to be humble. To be humble gives you the ability and the joy of devotion. Devotion to what? Well, what could you be devoted to? There's only one thing. You can do it in the form of me. You can do it in the form of yourself. You can do it in the form of your deities. You can do it in the form of the teachings. You can do it in the form of your mission on earth. Ultimately, that energy of devotion, when it's purified, it's from self to self. It's from God to God. It's from the creator to the creator, because that's all that there is. If there's only one substance, then what are you made of? What are you? Not what are you doing or how are you doing it, which is also cool and completely included in the wisdom paths. But this essential nature of absolute self-knowledge, what is it that I am made of, that all my assumptions of self rely upon, depend upon, and are sourced by? What is that? And if I somehow am that, because there is only one substance, then I must be it. And therefore I must be able to know it. You can know the infinite one, infinite creator. You can know the absolute source because there is only one. Therefore you must be source. Therefore with enough allowance and subtlety and purification, you can quantum leap into direct knowingness of yourself as source which then no longer separates anything. But this is practice, and you can have glimpses, you can have cool experiences, you can have satoris, as they call it. But the, what that does, what a glimpse in meditation does, or a glimpse through some kind of weird accident, or a glimpse through psychedelics, what it does is it, and it increases your conviction shift from worldliness to formlessness, to sub subtlety. He becomes subtler and subtler in your conviction. So you might still be interacting in the same way you were, or probably a little bit different, but essentially, like relatively speaking, similar in similar ways. Things don't appear suddenly super different, but there's this background conviction that has increased. That's now giving you a stability and a confidence that becomes more and more transcendent to the personal construct. It's, and the more you align with that, the more you become that transcendence and therefore can no longer identify with the character that is spinning its wheels in front of, inside of the space of 